Greetings everyone, I am RSV. Is Halva a simulation? There are several characteristics of the world that point to this possibly being the case. For the most part, I believe that everything we see in our day-to-day -day plane would be canonical with the PSO2 story, without all the fluff in between. Though we only do the urgent quests once, for example, or maybe we do do them multiple. It is hard to say. But let's get on to the point for Alpha being the simulation. And I'll actually point out that there is actually no real points against Alpha being a simulation. Even the fact that the player character in NGS is very similar to the character in base game is a point to the simulation theory. But let's go over the main points that I want to discuss in this video. First, the geography of Alpha is fairly unnatural. For the most part, and no, I'm not really talking about the fact here that there is a volcano straight next to an ice region. It's actually the fact that there's an ice region straight next to a rainforest and also an active volcano right next to a desert. The thing about rainforests and just forests in general is the more tropical variants exist closer to the equator of a planet, whereas ice regions exist very far away from the equator of a planet. So for half the geography to work, it virtually have to be an equatorial line right underneath the ice region of Caveras, and maybe that equator goes through Retum too. However, that is a bit more complicated. Moving on though, we have noticed that there are metal structures throughout the world. These metal structures clearly come out of the ground and are completely unnatural. This hints at the region being constructed or unnatural in other ways, which would explain the previous point, which the world seems out of touch with its geography. But it is possible that it's just a simulation simulated that way with the mechanical bits in the world showing that the world is constructed in that certain way. So the world is intentionally unnatural. Now then we also have the urgent quest. When an urgent quest is on, the sky lights up. I'm sorry, but when a drastic event happens in reality, the sky does not start glowing red. And in these urgent quests, there seems to be a limitless supply of enemies, which is very unnatural. Goals should not be limitless, unless they were intentionally made to be, which is a hint that the world is a simulation, because everything needs resources to repopulate and that would include dolls, so why is there an unlimited number of them? It could be because they are simulated mobs, and they are simulated in a way that causes them to be infinite. And we'll find out more once we get to the volcano region, not Caveras, because on the Neverius region, we have the forest area and the ice area, but there is also Retum, which seems to more closely resemble Lilipa. While Lilipins have not popped up in Retem, which would be another point in the ballpark of the world being a simulation, we do have Lilipa's robots. So we have Neverius entities, so the rock bears, the roly polies, and the really, really skinny bird things, and Lilipa's robots. Don't know why these enemies are on the planet, but well they are, and this is not normal, unless of course simulation. But probably the biggest ace in the hole is the battle tier, red boxes, and the trainer. Why are they the biggest ace in the hole? Why the trainer aren't even around? They make no logical sense in a world. And that's basically it, they're just there for plot convenience. And that seriously hints that the world is unnatural and a simulation yet again. They exist only as places for player to visit and get stronger. Mind you, NBCs in the verse also get stronger in similar ways, however, because again, as a simulation, it's possible that Aina and Manon, well, mostly Manon who is another Meteon, isn't actually an NPC and is another player in the simulation. And that would be something else separating the Meteon from the Halfinians. But none of these arguments actually disprove that Halfa is a real place and a real colony. Let's go through the list. A natural geography. It's a different planet. It's possible. It's not completely unrulable and it's not completely in favour of simulation and on top of that, geography is complex and complicated. And yes, that includes the world being distributed the way it is. However, this also occurring naturally isn't the only explanation for this. And this may answer the wildlife issue that I mentioned earlier as well. What if the colony was made this way on purpose? What if an ice region was placed there, a volcanic region there, a forest region there, and a retum region there for whatever reason the colony wanted to? It's possible that everything is just constructed 
by whatever technology that arcs have. This also explains why the world is so mechanical, and there are all these pieces of metal coming out of the ground. But there's also another explanation for that too. What if the colony was purposely put on a precursor civilization that originally built all those? And then that creates more mystery, and even urgent quests lighting up the sky can be explained by a colony. Because you know what colonies in PSO2 base game all have in common? They have a massive dome around them and it is highly possible that that dome would light up, so it makes perfect sense. And you know what? We actually do have proof of that in base game when we got an urgent quest because the dome inside the shopping plaza would light up red. The limitless supply of enemies to fight is a bit more complicated but can be ruled out for similar reasons. And I will tie it into why the training are also rule outable in the case of a colony. Well, these colonies have arcs to defend and those Arx defenders need to be trained somehow. They can't be incompetent the moment that an actual Dark Falls comes around to completely annihilate your existence, so they need to be trained somehow. What if the Trainier, Red Boxes, the Limitless Spawning Enemies, and even the Battle Tier were placed there on purpose by the Colony Founders, that way future generations of Arx defenders could be trained properly and help defend the Colony. But the reality is, we just don't know. For all we know, the world could just be in the Arkashic Records, and then that solves everything. I've been RSV, I hope you enjoyed my video, and I will see you next time.